all good, Maya. Uh, everything's fine. Can hear you. I think you are still muted. Hi, Barbara. So everything's fine, hopefully. Jonas Stern works. Okay, um, uh, I think that I can be here right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I think that we still have two minutes. So we will yeah, write. definitely. I was just checking if you are fine. That's it. That's yeah. basically great. Anka, uh, in a moment, it's your time with Sanster and so on. So it's going to be not only about sensor, more upcycling <laughs> projects. I thought so, actually, but I actually <laughs> never heard you speaking just about sensor, you know, the uh, the whole story and so on. We are always in the second chapter, so I was hoping <laughs> it's something like getting into it, but I like your work a lot, so it's absolutely up to you. So you prefer to have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time I'll try. I'll invite you next time and then I'll hope. <laughs> okay. Because I said, I, like, I'm with this topic for so, I've been yeah. with it for so long that I have, I'm almost 100% sure that we already <laughs> met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you are right. You are absolutely right. I'm, I, somehow I just wasn't in the first chapter. So I'm always in the second, third, fourth and so on. And the first is still somehow, or preview is somehow still <laughs> missing for me in this kind of narrative. So this is it. But you definitely do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot play the same song. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah no, you, this need, is you need at least at least you need to do a, a bit of remix or <laughs> not only remastering but remix so we <laughs> DJ culture <laughs> have, at least have a double deck try to make some scratches <laughs> I'm with you you know I'm sticking with you so <laughs> that's what we that's how you, you copy yourself but at the time you just yeah, this, uh, copying yourself is kind of interesting also <laughs> How's it about, uh, before we start actually it's half past and uh, I'll start uh, if everybody is here but then I would like to ask you about your book again so maybe at the end okay. of the session okay. so should I, should I start? maybe give ourselves a little bit because I'm not sure if Dunia, Patricia, and so on are here, so I'm just checking. Is everybody here? It would be a shame to miss your start, you know. So, yeah, Patricia is with, well, with us, I think. Yeah, Dunia also. Good. So, floor is your, Maya. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I'm here. Uh, okay. Uh, cool. Um, so I will start with introducing myself. Uh, I am a conservator. Uh, my name is Maya Rogowska. I'm a conservator and I'm a PhD student at Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun. My PhD project is under the supervision of uh, Professor Sławomir Kaminski from NCU and uh, Professor Maria Guier from uh, Universidad de Católica Porto in Portugal. Um, my uh, doctoral project uh, concerns uh, works or work uh, artwork of uh, Jonas Stern uh, in terms of documentation, technology, and conservation. And today I would like to uh, briefly address some of those aspects. Oops. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, first, I would like to uh, shortly present you the figure of the artist himself. Uh, Jonas Stern, as you can see, uh, lived a long life, and for the most of it, he was artistically active. Uh, but my field of interest are actually the last 30 years of his creativeness. Uh, this is when uh, he created his most renowned paintings, uh, primarily under the influence of Italian artist Alberto Buri, whose artwork he encountered when he was in Italy, he traveled to Italy in the 50s. Uh, this is also the time when he was able to revisit the trauma of Holocaust and to address it in, uh, in his work. And what this resulted in a very powerful and meaningful uh, paintings. However, painting is probably not the best term for, uh, for the works uh, I'm dealing with uh, because um, 
those are very complex uh, complex structures um, in his work Stern used uh, various organic materials uh, including bones uh, fish bones uh, feathers uh, plant residues uh, various textiles including cloths uh, nets uh, fishnets and many others all of those elements are glued to canvases or uh, other uh, painting rigid supports. Um, whole compositions are framed uh, within wooden frames, usually painted black, and usually uh, covered with plexiglass. Here are some uh, more examples of, uh, of works by Stern. So you can uh, have uh, a sense of a... Um, of, um, um, of, of his art, of the of the of the mood of his art, how it looks like. Well, however, uh, as I am conservator uh, and I look at the at those things from the conservation point of view, um, those uh, those composition they they pose uh, uh, conservation challenges. Uh, those three photos you can see here on the slide uh, were taken during, during my uh, query I did at the beginning of my studies uh, a year ago. And of course, they are not very good. They should not be presented in any uh, professional study or, uh, or elaboration. Uh, so, well, it appeared that to, in order to register properly those reflective uh, materials, uh, there, there is a need to photograph them in a professional studio with professional lighting. This is how it was done lately. Later, <laughs> uh, but uh, the character of those uh, work. Um, Maya, it may be just a problem on my side, but I cannot hear you for some reason. I'm not sure about others. I don't know if... Okay. Oh, I hear well. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, maybe it's my connection, but yeah, it's better now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Uh, so uh, going back, uh, so uh, no, uh, no professional photography will make justice to, uh, to the um, character of those objects, which are three-dimensional, special, uh, almost sculptural, like, like I said before. So uh, this is why we decided to uh, introduce 3D scanning into, uh, into the project. Uh, and uh, now at the Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun, in the uh, Department of uh, Conservation and Restoration of Modern Contemporary Art, uh, we are using 3D scanners from Arte Company. Uh, those are white and blue structured light scanners um, the one on the left side is called Artec Eva uh, and is uh, less precise. And the one on the right is called Artec Space Spider and it's um, a scanner with very high resolution. Uh, I like to joke that the one on the left looks like a little bit like a kitchen mixer and the one on the right looks like an iron. But yeah, exactly, exactly. But those are very powerful devices and they should not be judged by the, uh, their appearance. Uh, uh, so, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, those scanners were designed for industry purposes and that's how they are usually, um, usually, usually used. Uh, so, uh, scanning objects of modern art, which are usually very complex, um, and complex objects uh, made from different materials uh, requires a little adjustments from us. Uh, I will discuss it on the um, on the example of double faced uh, painting, uh, painting composition because uh, because it's painting on one side and, and three dimensional composition on the other. Um, on the side note, uh, the uh, backside of the painting, the colorful abstract composition, as the example what Jonas Stern was doing before he started to create his uh, three-dimensional bones, feathers, etc. Uh, compositions. Uh, so uh, the main problem uh, of the scanning with uh, um, of um, of painting of canvas is that the 3D scanners are very sensitive to any subtle changes in position and shape. 
Uh, this is a problem when scanning both the front and the back of the painting, uh, which was of course crucial in this case because uh, the front and the back is the art itself. Uh, so uh, the canvas is of course prone to micro moves, even if it's properly stretched on the stretcher. And that's why it is necessary to immobilize the object for the whole process of scanning. And this requires a little bit of creativity, which you will see right now. Uh, so here is, a, here is a setup we created to, to, to scan this object. Uh, so in case in this case, uh, we used steel trestles and uh, we mounted the painting through a frame with carpentry clamps. And this enabled to uh, create a stable structure with access to all of the angles of the painting, uh, besides, of course, besides the parts which were covered with the um, with clamps. As, and, but those were scanned later and those scans were later combined together in the software. So here you can see the screenshots of the uh, of the of the scans. Those were made with uh, Artec Eva uh, scanner, white structure light scanner, and then developed in Artec Studio 17 software. And here is a little movie on how of how it looks uh, all together. So you can see that you can see the object from all the angles. You can move it freely, etc. This is something you can uh, easily use for promotional purposes in museums or what, what, whatsoever. And it landed, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, I went to the next slide. How do I do it? Oh, okay, cool. And th those are, um, on the other hand, screenshots of 3D models. Uh, the the pre previous one was also triangle mesh. Uh, those are um, screenshots of um, models created with um, Space Spider white and blue uh, structured light scanner. Uh, they are um, way more detailed. Uh, all of the tiny bones and the sub subtleties of uh, painting structures are recorded. Uh, those, of course, uh, you can apply the colorful texture on those as well. Uh, this is just... Um, shape um, registered, but it is it serves a different purpose, which I will uh, talk about right now. Uh, so here is a comparison, a little comparison of the possibilities of those scanners. Uh, um, uh, one of the biggest challenges with 3D models uh, is in fact that they are very heavy in terms of data. Uh, so those discuss scanners uh, enables to register objects in detail. Uh, in high details, up to 0 0.05 millimeters of accuracy. But the process, but to process and then to share them, we need um, hardware with uh, with uh, very large working memory, which is uh, not always uh, available to all the uh, parties interested in working with 3D scans. So, uh, for example, museums, right, or or, or any other institu institutions. Uh, so, so that's why. Uh, that's why we need to sometimes choose uh, and to resign from quality uh, in favor of um, of other things. So uh, to com uh, com compare the possibilities of those two the scanners we're right, uh, using right now, uh, Artekeva, which um, uh, produced the the moving the moving scan you I uh, presented. Uh, allows to uh, make scans of lower quality. Uh, there's and those are best for general documentation, and also for uh, this is perfect for promotional, educational, and presentational purposes. On the other hand, Artex Space Spider uh, produce uh, scans uh, with a very high resolution. Uh, they are very precise. And um, but the uh, the uh, the problem is that those uh, those scans those three D models uh, that are produced are very heavy and very difficult. It, it creates difficulties with with working with them. So we have to choose what we want to to three D scan with uh, with this. So it's best for very little documentation for measurements. Uh, for then 3D uh, design uh, and for monitoring the state of preservation as well. Oh, I'll drink some water. <laughs> yeah, so that's, 
that's the thing with scanning. It's very brief and 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 very general, but I guess hope that 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 that, that it gives you uh, the overview of what we are doing. So uh, having the uh, objects photographed and scanned, we can now move to conservation challenges. And I would like to talk really briefly uh, about um, what I encountered uh, working with uh, with Jonas Stern works uh, from different museums. And um, generally, in general, all of the conservation challenges uh, which I encountered are directly connected with choice of materials and way of uh, combining and mounting them. Uh, so I would like to talk briefly about the main problems, which are microbiological deterioration, painting support deformation, and loosening the strength of the cohesion and adhesion of different materials. So uh, here is uh, what I encountered among others after um, opening the, the, those boxes, um, after removing the plexiglass from Jonas Stern works. Uh, so uh, those are the and products uh, of feeding of um, of beetles, which were later later identified as Antrenus species, commonly uh, known as a museum beetle. Here is the beast itself, photographed uh, directly on the objects with um, Hyrox uh, microscope. So even without removing the, uh, the, the, the thing from the, uh, from the object, we were able to document and, and identify it. Uh, all of the attacks that I encountered were inactive, uh, but they left the, um, the uh, structure of the bones that were attacked uh, very weakened. So uh, this is the thing that we have to address later in the conservation in the conservation process. Another pressing conservation uh, issue is the formation of canvas, canvas support present in many objects by Stern. Uh, an example presented is additionally unique in my opinion because instead of traditional linen or cotton canvas, the painting is created on an old Jewish talit, uh, bypassing traditional technological principles and adding an, an additional meaning to, to, to the whole thing, to be honest. Um, Composition of uh, heavy objects mounted with strong gluing uh, caused the tension on the material's phase boundaries, uh, resulting in local distortions, which are difficult to treat, as we cannot um, change the uh, change the um, adjustment of the of the of the of the things. We cannot. We have to to to, to um, preserve it as it is. Uh, the same tensions uh, cause damage to the paint layers uh, covering bones. Uh, paint layers are prone to chip off and to and to flake, as illustrated in the photos. You can you can see right now in the presentation. Uh, Stern used to experiment also with uh, paint layer texture, which is either very smooth and thin, or fully developed uh, with a rich texture. In the second case, the the paint layers are also prone to extended cracking. Last but not least, uh, in some cases, part of the objects composed on the canvases, for example, bones, uh, are missing. In such instances, we hope to use 3D technology and basing on the free, perform 3D models, uh, design replenishment, which can be later 3D printed or executed in a different way. And to summarize, I would like uh, to show you a little sneak peek of what I'm doing right now, because right now I'm doing uh, detailed technology uh, technology research, including instrumental and non-instrumental methods. And uh, after the, the research is completed, all the uh, conservation issues will be addressed, uh, both by an active conservation and restoration treatment and by creating a conservation guidelines and suggesting conservation methodology. And this is all I wanted to share today. If you will have any questions, I will be happy to answer them later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maya. It was absolutely great. And actually, I really very much like how you turned the perspective and dealt with picture on, uh, or image or painting as an environment, which is kind of interesting on philosophical, but also on material level. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. And yeah, hopefully there will be a space for discussion later.